anyway, All right, okay. let's, let's, so let's, we're uh, doing this with the eye out towards the website. That's what I need and, to And know. We're, we're going to talk about all the other, it's website, it's, we're, we're, these are the archives. Okay, so this could even stuff. be turned into like, God knows what, a book. And then we have a the meeting. The making of. And then we have a meeting, which if you'd like to come at 5.30, Brian? Yeah, to 5.30. My researchers. Actually, that maybe is what you're talking about. I've hired a team to sort of create co the content story. Oh, really? And it's not for the website specifically. It's just sort of how do you organize So you the show somebody in a theatrical person like what this is. How, what this the story is? is? Like if we were pitching this to Newsweek as a special, you know, a special edition on Galileo. Right. This is kind of like some of the six or seven big stories. And I haven't... I'm going to hear what they've come up with. Oh, We've been working on it for idea. two months. That must be what we were talking that's about. That's a good idea. Yeah, so okay. you're welcome to come back and sit in and listen. Where is it? Back at Tribeca. And Maybe. just sort of listen yeah, in. And I'll we'll just, kind of I won't say anything. I'd just like to hear. Okay, so okay, let's so, start with... All right, let's figure... Let, let me get my, my uh, music brain in gear because I'm... I have to tell you something that... I ended on what was sort of catching my attention at the time. Right. And there would typically be um, a quote... Either you know a true quote or sometimes an apocryphal quote, such as in the case of uh, "And Yet It Moves," and that would be sort of the beginning of a process. So Alan and I would typically work on getting down the basic tracks. I'd come in and say, "Okay, here's the verse, here's the chorus. I don't have a bridge." You mean lyric-wise, you would come in with that, or you'd come in with a chorus? It all it all depended on the song. Usually, either. the music came first. I see. But sometimes we'd work on it together. Uh, in other words, it'd be music and lyrics. Sometimes I'd have just, I'd have a, uh, usually the verse, you know, was the first thing that got formed. Then the chorus, and bridge usually just came last. Um, you know, musically, both Alan and Joe, in terms of the bridge, were, you know, typically tended to be more involved because that was just musically, you know, how, how do you have the, this transition? Um, but the, but Joe typically came in for one writing session where he would help us on the lyrics and start figuring out melodies and harmonies in advance. Um, so he'd listen to the basic tracks and um, typically without any, even a vocal track on it. So we'd have the music that had been recorded. And then Joe came in literally for one vocal section. We would do it, you know, verse, chorus, bridge, and we'd fill in. Typically, Joe was doing uh, the, uh, you know, the melody as well as the harmonies. So he was singing all the parts. And then he never really heard the songs again. So he'd come in for two hours. For one song? For or one song. Or he'd come in for two no, hours No, it is virtually a one. I, I, I don't even think we ever did. Maybe we did one session where we did more than one song. But it was really a song where Alan and I, it might take us a month to get the music written and then down on the basic tracks. And this was all done kind of part-time. Um, 22 songs, how long did that all take together? Well, we really, it's kind of, you know, I think sort of 1998 to 2003 was sort of the, um, you know, the main body of work. So sometimes we'd crank out, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember what year it was, one summer we sort of banged out three or four songs, um, but usually it was, you know, when was I inspired? I'd call up Alan, you know, when do you have time? And I, I was typically at Alan's at least one night a week. Really? Um, could, you know, you, could you do this now, though? Could now? You imagine? Yeah. Oh, God. With your I, schedule? You know, I've been trying to get down to Alan's just for my sanity for the last two years. Yeah. He's a busy guy, though. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> uh, but it was just, you know, the, the process was so... Well, why don't we take each song at a time? Okay, so let's... Let's okay. just go... I mean, if... Yeah, and if, we'll, you know, I think we should start with the way it is on the CD, only because okay. for some reason... All right, because that'll give us a The way structure. it was done on the CD is telling the story. Okay. Correct? So It's giving the main arc to the story. Right. Okay. So, Rules by Fools, for example, which is one of my favorites, I feel it's really melodic in a classic rock kind of way and Joe's vocals Joe Lynn's vocals is it Joe Lynn really? Joe That's Lynn it's Joe Lynn yeah it and can be Wyatt. Joe sometimes yeah. we call him Joe his vocals I think kind of bring a personality to it but do you remember the circumstances under which this was done and how you did it? did you come in with lyrics? did you come in with a guitar riff? yeah I think 
for Rules by Fools, um, the, the thrust of the song is really Galileo as the um, rock star professor who refused to uh, teach in t traditional robes or to give his lectures in Latin. He would deliver them in Italian. And so I kind of had this image. It was sort of that the Mick Jagger coming in to, you know, to teach these uh, courses. And he would give these kind of epic lectures. And what was the sort of the storyline behind Rules by Fools is that scholasticism, which is really sort of the school of knowledge uh, as it was being taught in the universities, different than religion, um, was all predicated on Aristotle as the organizing principle. And while Aristotle was a fantastic philosopher, he was a pretty lousy scientist. And Galileo, and, and it was, everything was accepted at face value. And so Rules by Fools was really Galileo chal challenging Aristotle, which was academic heresy, forget about religion. And Galileo managed to uh, alienate the academic community as well as the religious community. And in fact, he was much more supported by the religious community for the first phase of his life than by the academic community, partly because of his arrogance. So. Okay. I think this is very good to do in two parts with each song, okay. if it applies. Is this too, I mean. No, no, no. Is, we... That was literally uh, one and three quarter minutes talking oh. about the meaning behind the okay. song. Then I think if we do that also for each song about musically, I mean, some songs will lend themselves more to one than the mm -hmm. other. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, what's the word, inhibit you, and okay. I don't want to cut you off, but you know so much about this. Well, that's why I say I want to sound quite talk, also. So that's why I wanted to stop this. Okay, that's fine. That, no, that's good. Because that's the that's good, good meat of okay. what the song is about. Okay. Now tell me how you wrote okay. that song, Let me, if you remember. Can, can we just, only because that was the first thing. You want to do it again? I, I, well, I just want to get a couple more sound bites in. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And cool. let me, because so now I, cause I'm sort of reminding by... myself as we're going along. Okay. So Rules by Fools yeah. opens the piece. Opens the piece. And what Rules by Fools is really about is Galileo challenging Aristotle. And Galileo uh, was inspired by Aristotle, but thought from a scientific standpoint, Galileo, uh, Aristotle, take it again. Okay, don't forget to bring in the rock star thing too, because okay. that's All right, good. let me see if I can get that. Right. Rules by Fools was really, had a couple different threads that kind of came together to make the song. One was Aristotle had been the founding uh, light of uh, philosophical and, and intellectual thought uh, since the you know three and four centuries BC. However, from a scientific standpoint, many of his observations and his theories were completely false. How, however, invoking Aristotle had an authority where people just accepted things as true. And so Galileo was trying to show people that Aristotle was a bit of a boob. And hence, it was the inspiration for rules by fools. And it was, and in the academic circles, it created a great deal of animosity and resentment because Aristotle was the authority on everything. Also, Galileo, in his, giving his lectures, uh, my image was this kind of rebel rock star walking in, refusing to give the lecture in Latin, which was the tradition, refusing to wear the long robes that most academics wore. He was literally a rock star walking in and delivering these outrageous lectures that got all of the students incredibly excited. At the same time, it was very destabilizing for the rest of the, of the university because there was this incredibly popular professor who was breaking all the rules. How do you write the song? Do you remember? Yeah, the song, it was, this was an open G tuning, one of the early songs, which we did an open G tuning, which was literally um, unencumbered by any theory or any study of music. It's, it's very liberating. And a lot of it is sort of picking out unusual uh, 
chord patterns and just listening to the voicings on the guitar. Um, the, you know, the intro kind of had that driving rock um, introduction and you know just from a lyric standpoint I knew I wanted to have some sort of uh, you know we call it the uh, you know looking for the hey hey na 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 uh, and it was kind of what I said to Joe I said you know, give me a I need a na 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 in here for the uh, intro so you'll kind of hear that at the beginning I think we actually only recorded uh, uh, one one actual take and then we, we doubled it up for the purposes of the demo um, but it was really kind of trying to deal with this, you know, how do you set the tone and the stage of this rebel coming in, challenging everything. And so the whole idea of using rock, uh, this, is a, this is a real driving rock song, um, kind of put it in perspective. And it was really sort of that, uh, uh, it, it certainly wasn't a ballad, uh, but I always kind of imagined whether it was uh, Mick Jagger or a Bono coming in uh, that was sort of my image uh, for Rules by Fools. One more question about this song. Had you written the lyrics when you brought this to um, Alan, or did you have the guitar chords, or...? This one was, uh, this one was a little bit... It, it was a good vehicle for telling the story of Galileo as the professor. Um, and the chorus was really sort of, I, I just remember writing the chorus about, you know, destiny is calling out my name, uh, greatness a heartbeat away, where he, Galileo knew he was on to something. And so this one, I think, started with the chorus and then kind of evolved to the verse. And then uh, ultimately when we got into the bridge, uh, actually Joe added a lot just in terms of the timing. Um, I was thinking of it in a more, it, it kind of has an, an offbeat uh, lyric to it where instead of coming in on the chords, it was, I don't know if you'd call it syncopation, but it was more of a syncopated beat on the, on the uh, bridge. Uh, but this one, hard to remember what the sequence was, whether it was, but I, I do know that this one was written sort of in pieces, because I do remember the chorus, the verse. Alan and I actually um, had a whole big discussion about even the opening, uh, the first line of the verse, which, which is, what's all this fuss about? And Alan was putting the emphasis I wanted to, what's all this fuss about? And Alan wanted to have it a slightly more, what's all this fuss about? <laughs> and so we had, that was probably one of our few musical arguments. And it was kind of fun and I kind of ended up somewhere in the middle. Uh, but a lot of it had to do, you know, I was learning songwriting with Joe and Alan and how, uh, you know, it was a very interesting process where you just sort of learn the tricks of the trade. Uh, you know, they would tell me, don't worry if words don't exactly rhyme. Uh, I remember Alan saying to me once, he said, Jolene could sing the alphabet, just don't worry about it. So that was kind of, and by the time this 22 songs, I said, you know what, Jolene could, he could sing the alphabet and make it sound interesting. Actually, very funny, I actually wrote a song about singing the alphabet that we never recorded, but it was really kind of uh, <laughs> one of those things that sort of transpired from this. So I have, someday we'll do my, my alphabet song. Had you ever, just to digress for one second, had you ever written a song before any of this? Yeah, the, the, you know, it started off, uh, my songwriting uh, started off, it was actually an interesting story about the, I'd written, I'd always wanted to write a song for my daughters. And it started off with my first daughter, Juliana. Um, we actually, the first time I think I recorded with Joe Lynn was he came in to sing a song that I had written Alan had helped uh, with, with some of the music as well as um, uh, doing the tracks. And we did a lullaby for Juliana. And that was really the first one. Joe Lynn came in, did probably spend an hour with us, sang the song. We uh, uh, had a great time that evening. And that was really the first session with Joe Lynn. And that sort of got us off to a start. Then uh, started, I kind of like the songwriting thing, and uh, Juliana, the, the song was actually kind of moving. Um, we never really released it anywhere, it was really just for personal consumption, but it was really the first song that, uh, that I had done with Joe Lynn. 